HTC's greatest offering at present has to be the U11. It comes in the very attractive liquid glass surface finish, a premium body, and has all the power of a 2017 flagship. But how perfect is it? Let's break it down. First things first, we're gonna start with the camera. It's got a 12 megapixel primary camera at the back, which has a DxO mark rating of 90, the highest so far on any smartphone camera ever. Now, a DxO mark rating tells you how good a camera performs or how good the pictures it produces are, and in this case, for the U11, the rating is not for show. The U11 takes some stunning pictures in the day with very impressive colors that are accurate, all in a package that has a decent shutter speed, but at night I still think it needs work. The pictures come out noisy and the light exposure control isn't quite up there. For a more detailed comparison, check out my video I've made previously by clicking on the card up top. When it comes to 4K video recording though, the quality is great. You get some impressive detail in the shadows and a decent enough dynamic range, but barring the very average optical image stabilization, using the camera outdoors, especially when you're filming 4K, is very difficult. And I'll tell you why. Under this hot summer in Dubai, the U11 thought it heated up 30-40 seconds into filming and actually stopped recording altogether. The heating wasn't even severe, and the worst part was it refused to restart filming until you turn off the phone completely and actually wait for it to cool down, which took quite a few minutes. Now this could be an issue for those filmmakers out there, but hopefully in the long run it gets gets patched via a software update. But enough about that, moving to the front, I think the selfies in both the day and night looked really good, with great detail thanks to the 16 megapixel camera. The only thing I would change though was for it to have a 2K recording option like other flagships. Let's get back to the device now. It's quite a chunky one when you've got slender flagships like LG's G6 or Samsung's Galaxy S8. I think it's built well with a good deal of metal around it and no, I haven't tried bending it or anything, but the glossy back definitely calls for a case if you're a rough user and one is provided out of the box. Now yes, the multimedia experience isn't immersive. You get quite a large bezel surrounding the 5.5 inch QHD panel, but the panel itself is really good and comes protected with Gorilla Glass 5. I found it very impressive under sunlight and when viewing it from the sides, but best of all, I think boom sound really completes the experience. HTC has been known for a good audio experience and with the U11, they've done just that. I think the stereo experience on the U11 is unmatched for some very rich audio and even though the phone's got no headphone jack, the USonic headphones provide a very nice listening experience with active noise cancellation. Now if you want to keep using your headphones, you do have an adapter that is provided out of the box. But hold up, the unique train doesn't quite stop there. The U11 is the world's first phone, again, to come with sensing on the edges of the smartphone. They call it Edge Sense and it can sense the squeeze of your hand. You can trigger it to do many things and you can even have a short and a long squeeze. But my favorite and most convenient was to squeeze to turn on the flashlight or to long squeeze to launch the camera. It's almost second nature now and I find myself doing it on other phones and well, being disappointed. So then what runs the smartphone? Inside you'll find the Snapdragon 835 octa-core chip and 4GB of RAM. I'm gonna put this out there. This phone is pretty fast, right from unlocking it via the conveniently placed fingerprint scanner all the way to browsing social media apps the web, as well as playing games, especially because of the GPU inside that really makes it run well. But I wish my variant was the 6GB one that you find in the Middle East, rather than this 4GB one that you'll find selling in the States and internationally, because the 4GB one sometimes cannot be enough, especially when you're doing some heavy duty multitasking. On the software front, you're looking at a very clean Sense UI on top of Android Nougat, but I do feel there's somewhat a need to refresh how it looks entirely and not just via the themes that are available. So maybe in the future, ACC could change that up a bit. That being said, the package works well on that 3000 mAh battery on board. You can easily squeeze in a day's worth of power and no, that wasn't a pun. Anyways, for my usage, I got around 6-7 to seven hours of screen on time, sometimes even more, and I found myself plugging in the phone to charge during the late evenings. With USB-C and fast charge, 
challenge, getting from 0% to 100% took me around an hour and 40 minutes. So charging on the go shouldn't be an issue at all. So then who is this for? The U11 is a flashy phone and definitely gets the attention in public. If you're like me and you're not keen on the whole toddler phone deal, the U11 provides the perfect alternative. But one area where it falls short is its ability to withstand liquid damage. The phone is only IP67 supported as opposed to IP68 on other flagships, which means it won't be able to deal with longer submersion or the added effect of pressure. But for around 2600 dirhams, this phone is the cream of the crop from HTC. I feel like they've done a superb job with the handset in many aspects including innovative features, performance, camera and battery life. I do feel the phone is quite a worthy competitor among other flagships out right now and priced slightly cheaper than one or two of them, it's some great value for money. Let me know what you guys think about the phone in the comments below and hit subscribe for future reviews and videos. I'll see you in the next one, adios.